All right, guys, so I got the solar hooked up. I got it up and running. I was kind of limited on time this weekend, uh, so I really didn't film much of it. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through kind of exactly how to install it. And then in some other videos, I'm gonna go over all the menus and all the settings and you know, kind of show you what you can and can't do with the thing. Um, I've, I've installed a few of these uh, at different customers' houses uh, in different orientations. One of them was completely off-grid with just a generator and solar. Uh, the other was two paralleled uh, that were grid-tied with AC-coupled solar as well. Um, so these things are really flexible. You can do a lot with them. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through the installation and then go over what you can and can't do with them. So when I'm installing these things, I really like using wireways uh, or a trough, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is an 8x8x3. Eight eight um, and it really you got to use an 8x8 eight eight because this comes straight down into here. Uh, but it really makes it a nice clean installation. Uh, this one came out of a customer's house, that's why it's got a whole bunch of extra holes in it. Um, but it was free to me. So, I've used uh, one inch conduits here, three quarter over here. Uh, and you can see going up in there, these are for the negative and positive battery leads. Uh, this is for the load and grid, and then I have my CT wires going up in here. Some of you may remember that I, I had an oopsie with my last inverter. Um, what I did was I turned that main breaker on while the uh, panel was being fed by the PIP inverter. Uh, and so it kind of backfed the inverter, blew it up, and it wasn't good. So I am getting a interlock to put right in here. The main is off right now uh, and it will not get turned on. Um, I'm also getting an interlock and so when this breaker is on, this right now is feeding everything here. This is a 60 amp breaker, but when that's on, this will not be able to be turned on. Um, so the way I'm feeding this is I actually have a supply side interconnection over here. Uh, and this is on the supply side of my main breaker. Uh, that was for my uh, grid tie solar solar edge system. Um, and I was able to tap into that as well so I can have my main off and then I can feed from here to the solar arc. So overall the installation of this thing is actually really really easy. Um, over here you have your negative and positive battery leads. Uh, and so I used 4 aught copper, uh, and then there's the main battery breaker up here. I believe it's 225 or 250 amp, I'm not exactly sure. Um, so then over here, you have load, grid, and generator. I'm not using generator right now. I may hook it up in the future, but I'm not using it right now. Um, so load is your output. So you have line two, line one, neutral. All the neutrals get landed on this bar here and ground. And then grid is your grid in. And line two, line one, neutral ground. And these are both 63 amp breakers by the looks of it. Uh, the generator breaker is a little bit smaller, it's a 40. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, hooking these up, you just gotta, what I found here, let's see if you can see that up there. You just got to make sure you get the wire in the right spot. Um, it's kind of a little bit more towards the front. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, very easy to hook this up. Uh, and so over here, we have our uh, home limiting CTs. Um, so this is in three, four, five, and six. And these CTs go in the main panel. Uh, and what they do is they actually limit the power output, if you so choose, uh, to match that of your home. So you can actually not feed any power back into the grid. Um, and conversely, what you can do is you can do time of use settings, where is actually that's what I'm doing right now, um, is all the power I'm using in my house is coming from the battery, um, but it is, uh, 
Yeah, so so it basically knows, uh, you know, it's not putting any power back into the grid and it's not using any power from the grid. All the power is coming from the battery, but I'm still grid tied. And one other thing over here, these, this is the PV input. Uh, you can see down there it says PV1 uh, and PV2, positive and negative. Um, so I'm only using one of the charge controllers right now. I, w I will be using the other one in the future. Um, but I have nine panels on my garage roof that are feeding into this. So if we come over to this jumbled mess of wires here, this is this is my uh, e-gauge monitoring system, and it's just a pain to keep these all clean. Um, I have this 60 amp breaker. This is tied in with a uh, supply side interconnection, uh, so it's it's clamped onto the mains uh, before the main breaker and the main panel there. Um, and then this 60 amp breaker is feeding this wire here, which comes up, comes into here, and then it feeds the grid input. Uh, and then we go back here, the other one, it's going out, it's going into my main panel, and then it feeds this breaker right here. Um, and so that's pretty much it. Uh, the way I was running this today, I was running the uh, the dryer, I was running a lot of other things, water heater, the washing machine was going, um, and I was watching about 11 kW go through this thing. Uh, the breakers were getting kind of warm, I had about 50 or so amps on one of the lines, uh, so it was just about at its maximum. Um, there goes the fans. Uh, but yeah, it, it was, it was uh, feeding uh, a lot of power through it without overloading. I don't know what the maximum is on this, but I'll have to check that. A couple other neat features. Um, it's got a RSD 12 volt out signal. Uh, so that's a rapid shutdown signal. Um, so you can use this with Tygo uh, optimizers uh, in order to do rapid shutdown for roof mount systems. Um, and what you do is you just run that through to the Tygo controller, and as soon as it loses power with a switch outside, it'll shut down everything immediately. Um, and then we have a gen start relay as well. Uh, that's nine and 10 over here, and that has a setting where you can set it to start the generator at a certain uh, state of charge. Um, and then over here on the battery cables, one thing to be aware of here is I have noticed on a couple other installs that these uh, top two bolts, that you shouldn't necessarily need to tighten. Uh, I have needed to tighten them. Uh, so just be aware of that if you're installing one of these. And down on the bottom, this is the Wi-Fi dongle here. Uh, and it just gets, there's two little screws that hold it in. I've left the screws out for right now, but I will put them in in a minute. Um, and that connects this to the internet. Uh, so what you do is you download the app, you scan that uh, QR code, uh, and you can set up the internet on it, you know, hook it up to your router. Uh, the thing with this is you cannot hardwire it to the internet. So if you want it hooked up to the internet, you have to use the Wi-Fi dongle and you have to have Wi-Fi wi -Fi available. All right, well, that's all I'm gonna do for tonight, guys. Uh, really happy to have this thing up and running and running my house off of it. It was super easy install. Uh, so in some later videos, I'll get into all the settings and, and what I did to set it up. So thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy it.